Before leaving this intro section, there's one other thing that we need to look at in regards to this in-text citation. In-text citation must refer to a reference citation that appears in an alphabetical list on your reference page after the body of your paper. So let's go back to the reference page. Let's look under columns and see if we find an appropriate reference citation. And here it is with all of the bibliographic information necessary in order to go and find that exact source. Now the next thing I want to look at is the review of literature. And in an APA style research project, the review of literature has two major purposes. One is to present a snapshot, not an exhaustive study, but only hitting the highlights of the previous research done in this area. And then the second purpose is to evaluate that research, those highlights. And putting those two things together achieves the overall purpose of this review of literature, which is to present to the reader the state of the art, the current status of the research in this particular area. So let's take a look at this review of literature as well as some of the APA styling components that go with it. First, let's look at the title, Brief Review of Literature. This is called a Level 1 heading in APA. It looks exactly like a main title of your paper, and it is even centered exactly like your main title and uses title capitalization. So, a Level 1 heading in APA looks exactly like the main title of your paper. The other thing to point out is that the APA manual says that whenever you are using only two levels of headings in your presentation, you should use level one heading, and you see here the second level you should use a level three heading. And according to the APA manual, those are the two levels to be combined whenever you have two levels of headings. The next thing to be pointed out about this review of literature is that it must be organized in some fashion. You must look at all of the sources that you are reviewing in this section and find a way to organize them for presentation to your reader. The organization can be based upon their relationships. It can be based upon a set of contradictions. It can be based upon the gaps that you see in the research. Here in this paper on genetic discrimination, you can see that the literature review is being organized by a series of key questions that must be asked and defined before any kind of legislation can take place. Okay, picking up here with our level three heading and our first question, how should genetic discrimination be defined? As you see, this level three heading is aligned left, italicized, and uses title capitalization. Now for the paragraph underneath it. Let's read. Ethicists and legal experts have yet to decide on a standard definition of, quote, genetic discrimination. Here in this case, the quote marks are being used to distinguish the use of words as words. Second, let's look at the space after those quote marks. In APA, there is only one space in between sentences. The next thing to look at is the position of that period. In APA and in American printing in general, periods and commas always go inside quotation marks. Next sentence. Limke, 2005, pointed out that current definitions of genetic discrimination are too diverse and lead to contrary findings. Limke, parentheses, 2005, close parentheses, is an in-text citation in the author date style of APA. Here, the name Limke was used as part of this student sentence. Therefore, the author's name did not have to appear inside the parentheses. The other thing to point out is that APA prefers 
that the in-text citation go toward the front of the sentence together with a signal phrase whenever possible. And a final thing to point out is that since this summary of LIMPKE 2005 referred to the entire summary, a page number was not necessary. A page number is only necessary when giving a quotation in APA if a page number is available or if you wish to refer the reader to a particular section in a larger study. Continuing with the last paragraph on this page, now both of those sentences there and that you see highlighted here refer to the Rothstein study or source. However, only one citation was necessary because the second sentence, which refers to the source, was continued with a pronoun that refers to Rothstein. Thus, the student author cleverly prevented the needless repetition of another in-text citation to Rothstein. On the next page, I'd like to point out the importance of using synthesis in your research paper. In this middle paragraph, beginning with, in 2003, around 900 genetic diagnostic tests were being offered, I'd like to take your attention to the sentence beginning after Collins, comma, 2003. Now look at that paragraph where those sentences constitute clearly three quarters of the entire paragraph, but there are no in-text citations, although those sentences clearly refer to many studies. Is that plagiarism? What's going on here? What the author has done is brought together or synthesized in her own words a conclusion, an insight she arrived at by reading all of those sources. Therefore, no citation is necessary. As a matter of fact, praise is necessary because clearly the author is using her critical insights to bring together these reviews, these summaries of these studies in order to make her important point about the need for research that she is finding by virtue of having done this review of literature. That's a very important use of a critical faculty, which is to be expected at this level of writing. Okay, the final thing we're going to take a look at is your references page. As we've already pointed out, your references page comes at the end of your paper, beginning after the last page, on a page by itself. The word references appears at the top of the page, centered, capitalized. Your references are double-spaced and in alphabetical order. And, of course, the only works that can appear on a references page are the works that you actually cited in an in-text citation in the text of your paper. The other thing that I would say to you or point out to you and is the Bedford Bibliographer. We have uh, reviewed the use of that in our class, and I would just like to say that the Bedford Bibliographer is the only citation machine that I have found that gives 100% correct APA citations provided you select the correct source type and enter the correct information. Okay, you've spent all of this semester on this one project. You've done it upright. You've written it in stages. And you've taken your time and you've gotten feedback on each one of those stages. That's called the writing process. And I hope that in your future work, you will make time in your schedule to somehow build in this writing process that you have learned to produce this paper. And by employing that writing process, by getting feedback at each step of that writing process, that's how you're going to produce your best writing in graduate school and beyond. It's been a real pleasure. Best of luck on your research projects. You've worked your butts off on them. And I really look forward to it.